Chances are you've passed someone living on the streets in your local community. You might even pass the same person every day. You feel like you should do something, but it's hard not to wonder what would even make a difference? Especially if they're still there at the same spot doing the same thing the very next day. Society typically provides shelter, food, and other basic important needs. But even these resources don't seem to be enough to solve the deeper issue of homelessness. It's easy to feel helpless. But in fact, recognizing this struggle means realizing God has placed a special call on your heart to make a real impact in the lives of those who are living on the streets. To do that, we have to ask, a couple of vital questions. What is the root cause of homelessness? What would cause someone to accept and settle into living their life on the streets? Just for a second, imagine you were suddenly faced with the possibility of losing everything you had, including your home. If you sat down right now and made a list of the people you could call in a desperate situation like this, you might be surprised how many names you would end up with. Now, imagine trying to make that same list, but not being able to call anyone because the only people who come to mind want to hurt you, or maybe you have hurt them. Maybe deep down you think they wouldn't care or that you would be a burden, that you don't deserve their help. This is the reality and the mindset that many people have as they begin their life on the streets. It's a traumatizing experience. If you live that way long enough, what sorts of things would you begin to believe about yourself? What sort of living conditions would you accept? At Christ in the City, our experience has proven that the deepest poverty of homelessness is sown in the heart long before someone becomes homeless. It's an all-encompassing experience of being unknown, unloved, and unwanted. It's not only a problem of not having a house, money, or clean clothes. The root of homelessness is ruptured relationships. So what can be done? Imagine, once again, you're back, living in the streets, in your normal spot downtown. People are passing you by, as they always do, when all of a sudden, Three college-age kids show up and ask, Hi, how are you doing? They smile and introduce themselves. They ask your name and actually remember it the next day when they come back because they actually want to see you again. They are willing to slow down and not just pass you by, but to have conversations and simply get to know you. How would you feel when these kids notice you, when they see you, when you recognize they love you without any strings attached. Over time, the narrative inside your head begins to change. You start asking new sorts of questions like, am I lovable? Am I worth it? Is it really true that I can have a better life? This is the power of consistent and steady love. At Christ in the City, we believe you shouldn't have to feel uncomfortable or confused about how to help. That's why each year, our team equips tens of thousands of people nationwide to encounter the poor in their own communities. Seeing a person to be loved, not a problem to be fixed. In this way, we are helping address the root cause of homelessness, recognizing the deeper crisis of relationship and treating it with the love and hope that comes from meaningful encounters and intentional friendships. So what can you do? How can you participate in this vital work? Don't keep passing by the man or woman at that intersection every day, confused about what you can do to make a difference in their life. Just imagine the impact it would make if that homeless person had even just one friend, you, who knew them by name and cared about them beyond a passing handout. What difference would that make to your local community? And if more people join together in this mission, what difference would we make to the world?
Be part of the solution to address poverty at its core. Hi, my name is Faustina Gorham. I'm from Nicholasville, Kentucky. I just graduated from Northern Kentucky University with a degree in musical theater, and I'm currently living in Denver, Colorado as a missionary with Christ in the City. I've been here since August. Um, this is my first year. Um, Christ in the City is a missionary formation program dedicated to forming young adults to be missionaries for life. We desire to create a culture of encounter where every person is seen, known, and loved. A little bit about our life. We live in community. There are 31 of us missionaries, um, and we all live in this elementary school building. It used to be an elementary school, but now it's our house, and we call it the School of Love because um, you learn a lot about how to love people when you are living in community with them, especially when there are 30 of them. You really have to learn how to die to yourself. Um, it's also just really, really, really amazing to spend so much time together with people who really want to follow God and love Him and love people and the poor. And in the heart of this school of love is a room called the chapel, and we call it the heart of the house because Jesus is present there and we, um, we want everything that we do to be an overflowing of love from him and from the love that he pours into us. So we begin every morning at 6.30 with our morning prayer and then we have an hour of prayer after that just for ourselves, personal prayer. Um, we go to daily mass every day. Um, we, we believe that like, we can't give what we um, don't have ourselves, and so we really desire to give our friends the love of Jesus when we meet them and we encounter them on the streets. So we, yeah, we spend a lot of time with the sacraments. We have a lot of time for adoration, um, and we end each night with night prayer at 9 o'clock, and then hopefully go to bed. <laughs> um, I think the video I played gives a really good glimpse into what our apostolic life is like, our mission, um, this mission of loving people as they are, where they are, without um, any agenda, even the agenda of trying to fix or correct or um, instruct a person. Um, just simply sitting with someone, often sitting with them in their suffering, and just being there with them and loving them um, with the same gaze of love that Jesus loves us when he sees us. That's like my favorite part about our mission is like how simple it is and how beautiful it is and how like real and human it is. Um, and I think just how very close to God's heart it is because that really is how he loves us. On the day that we don't go out on the streets, we have intellectual formation. Um, these are classes that we take to um, conform our minds more to the truth and to God. Uh, and to help us understand the world better. We take classes like salvation history, Catholic social teaching, and applying that to today's times and culture. Overall, this program is just very, very um, well-rounded. It has helped me grow in ways that I never would have even anticipated. Um, yeah, I really can't put into words how amazing it's been. And that is why I'm very excited to announce that um, the program is actually expanding to Philadelphia. Um, for the first time, it is, it is expanding to a city outside of Denver. Um, this is something that's been about five years in the making, um, but this is this upcoming August is the year that it's finally going to happen, and I am really excited that I am going to be doing my second year at Christ in the City in Philadelphia. Um, I'm very excited to bring this mission to a city that's really, really hurting right now. If you'd like to join me in this mission of bringing Christ's love and mercy to the streets of Philadelphia, then great, because I really need your help. Um, I, I need to fundraise $10,000 by July 1st to um, pay for the upcoming year. Um, so if that is something you would be interested in and feel drawn to, I would greatly, greatly appreciate um, any help I can get. I would say monthly donations are really, really, really helpful. <laughs> um, and I think really beautiful too, to like be a part, to like really be a part of the mission, like in an ongoing, continuous way. Um, yeah, so if that is something you feel called to, then um, 
there's a fundraising link in this video, but also um, the most important thing you can do, honestly, is to pray. Pray for me, pray for the mission, pray for all the missionaries, and especially for all the friends on the street that we encounter. We could really use all the prayers that we can get. Um, and know also that every morning in the chapel, we begin our day with intentions and we pray for all of our supporters and donors and all the people who are praying for us and for our mission. Um, we lift you all up in prayer as well every day. Um, you are just as much a part of this mission. Um, and yeah, we could not do it without you and we love you. And yeah, so that's pretty much all. That's pretty much all I have um, today. Thank you for watching this video. It's probably really long. Um, if you'd like to learn more about this mission, feel free to check out the website or shoot me an email. Maybe we could even set up a phone call if you'd like to chat about it. Um, I guess I'll close out this video by saying that God loves you. You are inherently good and he made you because you're going to make heaven a better place for all of eternity.